what our idea was is that we were going to make t-shirts and it was the stop wars uh with darth vader wearing uncle sam top hat and it was uh stop wars and on the back we have a sign that we was it a t-shirt design that we did that is government doesn't work i want my money back but it it shows a line of government promises going up you know a 45 degree angle and then of course individual liberty and freedom you know where are we really at as time has gone on it's just kind of especially since in the last decade it's just dropped off the map so there's a gap between the promise and what's delivered well that's the revolution gap you know when you get far enough from what the promise is and what's reality you know that's when you have revolutions and man we got this big gap so we um we kind of understand what's going on now this is what i wanted to share with you guys and we'll just let these scroll for a little bit I have had discussions with the Phoenix Police Department, Sheriff's Department, everything over the last months and years and whatever. And most recent, um, I talked to the gentleman that, that I believe his name is Mark. He is the new head of uh, community relations. I used to call it confrontation prevention squad and all this other stuff. And the gentleman that I usually deal with, he was at some other function. He goes, Ernie, not going to be there. I'm covering some, you know, Hispanic whatever thing. I speak Spanish, and I'm over there. So Al Ramirez was not there. This other guy, and we've met with him before when we did the TSA events at Sky Harbor Airport when we, you know, did our creative stuff there. And we talked to the police, and we made it very clear to them. We had probably eight to nine different officers representing at least four, five, six different departments. They Sky Harbor, liaison to Homeland Security, the, you know, community relations guys, some other people, Lord knows what. And their thing was try to convince us that you had to get a permit. You got to get a permit to do anything, permit, piece of paper, permit. And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen because I already know where that goes. I know how that works out. So we're just like, nope, 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 nope. Well, finally, the event happened. No big deal. No problem. No muss, no fuss. And it it became a lot bigger than they thought. They didn't anticipate it was going to be a national thing like this Occupy movement is. What they are led to believe, there's two things that have been happening. From the right, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but the feedback I'm getting, it could be from fusion centers or Department of Homeland Security or whatever, is that Arab Spring is coming to America and it's supported and pushed off, uh, put on by, uh, I don't know, Islamo-fascist, uh, those that would do harm America and uh, they're not America. So I can I can see where this is going. They're they're trying to trump up some kind of justification for taking a hard line. So I'm going, okay. Well, like Nick said, he goes a little behind the scenes. He said, look, this morning they had a permit till noon from move on. Well, move on being or move forward or lean forward, whoever the heck they are, you know, the left, and they just, you know, we got the permit. Well, the second that you start getting permits. Then you sign a piece of paper agreeing to something. And are you signing it for everybody there? I mean, how does that work? You're taking responsibility? I mean, what? So during the week, I was talking to the Phoenix Police Department, and I was told that they had a permit that had an expiration of 6 p.m. Well, I'm going, all right, so what happens at 601? I don't know. It goes to 6 p.m. And they were schooled. I mean, everybody, everyone I talked to when I was there talking to the officers, everything, they all said the same thing. 6 p.m. Well, it's 6 p.m. Closes at 6 p.m. Well, what happens then? It closes at 6 p.m. What happened? It closes. Okay. All right. So they had a plan. So then I'm going, all right. Well, uh, I, I find out that there is a plan that they had worked when they were negotiating with the police department, this, the Occupy Phoenix. I guess they were in touch with these people. And they said, look, we're going to go ahead and leave at 5 o'clock and go to another park where we'll stay. The Phoenix Police Department convinced them that if they left at 5, put them up at another park called Hans Park. Now, Mayor Hans, when she was a mayor in the early 90s, I think, or something, they just got a park named after her. So anyway, so they have, it's a nice park. Now, there is a freeway that runs in the middle of Phoenix called the Papago that goes underground. 
and it used to be a street in the middle of Phoenix. So they decided to build a park on on top of it and make it a tunnel and everything because they made a bunch more money and, I don't know, they build underground bases or something. I, you know, who knows? So what happens is you got this big, giant, you know, park on top of this, uh, like, 12-lane wide highway with all the, you know, and ancillary stuff on the side middle and everything. It's supposed to have trains that went in the middle and all this other stuff. So it's a large area in the middle of town, but it's fenced. So you have it to where uh, you don't go off the edge and, you know, jump on the freeway. So they got it fenced there. They got it fenced at the other end. They got another fence, and then it's a residential area on the, the north side. So this large park has, you know, bathrooms and so on and lots of grass. And this time of year, you know, even mid-October, heck, we hadn't even got, you know, under 90 degrees yet. So we got nice full grass out there. It's all water and it's party. So they're going, we got bathrooms and so on. We'll go up to Hans Park. So they escorted them. That was the deal. The Phoenix police are going to escort you because we love you so much. Sound like Brooklyn Bridge thing. I could feel it coming. So they escort them away from downtown Phoenix. Man, they do not want to have these guys causing this New York City problem thing. And around the country, they're, you know, really making a big push on this, man. You don't want them downtown. Well, we made the deal with the Phoenix. I said, look, if this becomes, if, if the issue, the city council and everything, if this issue is all about they're, they're dirty or they, you know, didn't pick up, you know, we'll go around and show up our pickup truck and we'll just make a thing at it. Freedom's Phoenix, heck, we'll libertarians, revolutionaries, Ron Paul supporters, Gary Johnson guys, whatever, I'll show responsibility and we'll pick up the trash. We'll get them. You know, they're just looking for somewhere to throw it. I mean, they're not just being messy. So they made it. Fortunately, people brought a bunch of trash bags. So they were picking up after themselves. Before I left even, uh, it was, I left probably like 4.30 or something like that. And uh, they had already picked up everything. So it was, I, that was not a problem. That's not an issue. That's not their reasoning. The reason is they don't want people downtown when businesses open again and across from City Hall, it'll turn into a thing and they know it. And they learn this. If you don't squash this in the beginning, they will be there forever and it will grow, especially when nobody has a job and nothing else to do and they can express themselves. So I'm going, okay. Oh, yeah, this sign, Obama and Bush are war criminals. That was done by Ryan, one of the activists here. Now, you see he's wearing a sidearm. That's another issue. You'll see he's on the sidewalk there. They said he could go on the sidewalk. Here in Arizona, um, you don't have to have a permit or anything to carry a firearm concealed or open. Well, what happened was is that in the mid-'90s, and this is how I knew a lot of these guys is from these activities that I got to know the police and had a decent relationship with them, and in fact, some of the same people until they changed some of them, was that we were like, look, the signs on the park said, no firearms allowed. And we were having a lot of problems. There were people that were complaining. They're taking their kids, you know, to the park. And then, you know, uh, the gangbangers come at uh, when his son starts to go down playing basketball and they're gunned up and they're disarmed and they complain and the cops don't do anything and they won't let them protect themselves and have signs saying you can't bring guns and all that kind of stuff. Well, we knew what the law actually said. It said no discharge of firearms. So we're going, okay. So what we did is I, I brought this up for you to see this. I talked to them and they said, no, you can't go on the grass. You can't go in the park with your firearm. So a lot of these guys, you know, uh, they're, you know, uh, well, really? And they go, yep, you know, on there. So I'm going, I don't think it says that. So I asked for clarification. You know, where did you get this? So the officers said that they were told in prep that, all right, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, no guns in the park, uh, they can go inside, I can't go in there, because. Because why? Because we said, okay, fine, good enough for them. Well, the law right here, it says discharge of firearms, okay? You are guilty if you have a discharge of firearm. Now, they said the classification, the charge is, um, you get charged with the discharge of a firearm in a park, except... When you're defending yourself, you're defending this, you got blah, 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 you have a special permit, yada, 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 it goes on. But be, bringing a firearm into a park is not against the law or the ordinance. It can't because of Arizona state law. It's called state preemption. And, you know, because you can't have different laws in every little town that you go to. 
So I'm going, you know, I already knew this. I was like, I don't know how you're getting around this, you know, because they can't, you know, just because they want to. And they go, well, nope, can't, you know, this is not the time to be discussing this, Ernie. We don't want to discuss this now. It's not the time. And I'm like, this is the perfect time. This is when you discuss this stuff, you know, because what was going on? Let me go ahead and get to uh, some of the pictures here for those that are watching the stream, um, the YouTube. What happened was there is a gentleman, his name is JT Reddy. Now, JT is a uh, militia type. He's, uh, you know, a white supremacist. You know, he's been, um, uh, uh, here's pictures of us painting the RV, RV, da, 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 da. And taped it up, painted it. Now it's all gray. And we're getting ready to. So when we go to these kind of functions like this, and this is the primer is all done. Now we're going to logo it and paint it the colors we want and everything. And when we go down there, we'll have our own little RV. And we do oh, goat and chicken saying hello. We love your RV. Now, what we did is we go down there, and there was a militia unit, guys that the Arizona Defense League, De La, whatever the heck it is. And they have new laws that they're working on here to give the governor a. Someone other than the National Guard, which got or State Guard, which got take, took taken by the Federals, and you know, so this is all a big thing. Well, there's some of these people that really, 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 you know, they love their guns and they want to go down to the border and defend it against the Mexicans and and all this kind of stuff.